Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, one verse of scripture, verse 20. The Apostle Paul is writing, he's writing to the church at Corinth. And he says, for all the promises of God in him, are yea and in him they are amen unto the glory of God by us for all somebody shout all all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us One paraphrase puts it on this wise. Whatever God has promised, whatever God has promised, gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. In him, this is what we preach and pray. The great amen. God's yes and our yes together gloriously evident all the promises of God they've been stamped with the yes of Jesus but it's not just enough for God to stamp them with his yes somewhere you've got to add your yes and when God's yes and your yes come together that's where miracles happen That's where healing happens. That's where deliverance happens. That's where revival happens. The Holy Ghost will help me for the next few moments. I want to preach about the power of your amen. The power of your amen. Would you set your Bibles down? Let's pray together. And let's ask that the Holy Ghost would have its way here in these next few moments. Jesus, I love you. I thank you, God, for this night. I thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. I'm asking you now in these next few minutes that we have together that you would anoint us, anoint my mind, anoint my heart, anoint my spirit, help me get in my mouth what you've placed deep in my heart tonight. I pray anoint every ear to hear, anoint every heart to receive. Let us leave challenged, changed by the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Seemingly so small and insignificant, words are very powerful. I don't think we realize sometimes just how powerful our words really are. Whoever said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Either one of two things hasn't lived very long or hasn't had the high privilege of meeting some of the people that I have met. Because ill-spoken words or words that are lightly, carelessly spoken can inflict more pain, more hurt, more damage than sticks and stones ever could. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. Someone once said your words are a seed in your life. Every word you speak Every word, not just that you speak, but every word that you allow to enter into your thought process. Every word you think. But not just every word you think. Every word you allow your ears to hear. Every word you allow to enter into your mind will influence your life. They said, your words are your seed. Your inner subconscious mind and heart are the ground where that seed is planted and the harvest is your future perhaps you've heard it said like this watch your thoughts for they become your words watch your words for they become your actions watch your actions for they become your habits watch your habits For they become your character. 
Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Your words are seeds sown. And don't you ever forget that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You will reap your words. I don't think that it can be emphasized enough tonight that your your thoughts become your words. And your words, though sometimes seemingly insignificant spoken sounds or their written representation, your, your words become your actions. And your words, they not only become your actions, but now they are directly influencing your habits. And not just your habits, uh, but now we're talking about your character. And now we're talking about your destiny. And your destiny, your future, is in large part uh, determined. Uh, If you trace it all the way back up, uh, it's in large part uh, determined uh, by what you say, by by what you think, uh, by what you allow uh, to enter into your ears. I read here a while back about a Harvard study. Now we're talking, we're not talking tonight about outlandish things. We're not talking about about shooting for the moon. But but a Harvard study, according to one Harvard study, 95% of the things that you write down in the sincerity of your heart, 95% of the things you write down come to pass. Words are Powerful. In fact, I believe your words possess creative power. When you open your mouth and you begin to speak, or you put pen to paper and you begin to write, the words you speak, the words you write, whether you believe it or not, they affect you and the world that you live in. Daddy, hear me when I preach to you tonight that the world you live in uh, the world mama that your family lives in uh, you are creating that world uh, with your words Uh, daddy when you sit down and begin to talk uh, you are building the world uh, that your wife uh, is going to live in Uh, mama when you open your mouth uh, and begin to speak uh, you are creating uh, you are building uh, you are framing uh, the world world uh, that your family uh, is going uh, to live in. Uh, Have you ever noticed uh, that people who constantly live uh, in a state of fear, uh, you just sit down uh, and have a conversation with them uh, and it's not very long uh, until out of their mouth uh, you hear it. uh, You hear the fear. Uh, Doubting people, they're the same people uh, who talk doubt uh, and unbelief. Uh, Negative people, uh, they're the same people. Uh, You just hold a conversation with them uh, and you'll start to hear uh, the negativity. Uh, Every time they open their mouth, uh, negativity spews. Uh, They have nothing good to say. Uh, Nothing positive. Uh, Nothing encouraging. Uh, Nothing uplifting. Uh, And as a result, uh, they have built the world uh, that they're living in. Uh, And it's a negative world. Uh, Critical people, they talk critical. Uh, You have the power. Uh, The power is yours uh, to create the world uh, that you're going to live in. Uh, I don't know about you on this Sunday night, uh, but I know what kind of world uh, I want to live in. Uh, I've watched people uh, who live uh, in a world of negativity uh, that they have built themselves uh, with their words. Uh, I've listened to them talk. Uh, They can't see good uh, in anything uh, or anybody. Uh, There are times it seems like everybody uh, has an ulterior motive. Uh, They're always looking over their shoulder. Uh, That's the world uh, that they live in. Uh, I made up my mind. Uh, I determined a long time ago. uh, I refuse uh, to live uh, in that kind of world. 
I refuse uh, to live uh, in a world of fear. Uh, I refuse uh, to live uh, in a world of doubt. Uh, I refuse uh, to live uh, in a world uh, of unbelief uh, and negativity uh, and criticism. Uh, nothing's ever good enough. Uh, you spend your days uh, finding fault with God, uh, finding fault with the church, uh, finding fault uh, with the man of God, uh, your brothers and sisters, uh, your husband and wife, uh, your children, uh, your co-workers. Uh, you can live in that kind of world uh, if you want to. Uh, I'm sure you'll find somebody who wants to live there with you, uh, but I know what kind of world uh, I want to live in. Uh, it's not a world of doubt. Uh, it's a world of faith. Uh, it's not a world of unbelief. Uh, it's a world of trusting God. Uh, it's not a critical world. Uh, it's a world that's filled uh, with the blessings of God. Uh, it's a world uh, that's filled with revival. Uh, that's filled with souls. Uh, that's filled with the glory of God. Uh, that's filled with miracles. That's the kind of world I want to live in. And if I want to live in that kind of world, then I better start talking like it. And if I, you better hear me tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And if I want to live in that kind of world, I better surround myself with people that are talking like it. I love you, brother, but if you want to spew your doubt uh, and you want to spew your negativity, you better find somebody else. Uh, I don't want to hear it. Uh, I love you, sister, but if you want to pick apart everybody, you better find somebody else. Uh, I don't want to hear it. Uh, I refuse uh, to live in that kind of world. I refuse for my wife uh, to live in that kind of world. Uh, I refuse for my babies uh, to live uh, in the, to live in the gutter of negativity, uh, the gutter uh, of bitterness, uh, the gutter uh, of anger, uh, the gutter uh, of criticism. Uh, I want them to live uh, in a world uh, that's filled with revival. Uh, I want them to live uh, in a world uh, that's filled uh, with believing God. Uh, I want them to live in a world uh, that's filled with the glory of God. And you create it. You create it. You create it. You build it. With your words. You create the world you live in with your words. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Records in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. And guess how he did it. He created it. God created his world with his words. One in three, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. One in six, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And he made the firmament, and he divided the waters. One in nine, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together under one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. One in 11, God said. One in 14, God said. One in 20, God said. One in 24, God said. One in 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Uh, male uh, and female uh, created he them uh, eight recorded times uh, God said uh, and whatever he said uh, came into being uh, the writer of Hebrews would say uh, through faith uh, we understand uh, that the worlds uh, 
we're framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The psalmist would say in 33 and 6, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And by the word of the Lord, all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth, for he spake and it was done done. He commanded and it stood fast. God created his world with his word and I'm preaching to you on this Sunday night that there is power in the words that you speak. There is power in your tongue. Every word you speak affects your future. Every word you speak affects your destiny. When you open your mouth, daddy, when you open your mouth and you just carelessly, lightly, not even thinking, you just say it. You're building the world that you're going to live in. You're building the world that your babies are going to live in. You're not just saying words that have no meaning or value. But whether you realize it or not, you are framing word by word. You are framing your world and the world that you will live in. That's why the wise man would say, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Solomon wanted us to understand the unbelievable power. Literally, the life and death power. Power uh, that is in our tongue. Uh, James would tell us uh, what the tongue is like. Uh, he would say they take these these huge ships, uh, these mighty sea vessels, uh, and they control them uh, with a little rudder. Uh, he would say they take these animals, these wild uh, animals, uh, and they tame them. Uh, man does that. Uh, man can steer the ship, uh, and man can tame the animal. But he said, let me tell you about that thing called the tongue, uh, the most unruly member of your body body. You can't control it. I believe that's one of the reasons why God chose tongues as the initial sign of receiving the beautiful gift of the Holy Ghost. Because what you can't control, you just let the Holy Ghost baptize you. You just let the Holy Ghost baptize your tongue. You did you catch that? You just let the Holy Ghost baptize your tongue. I pray on this Sunday night before we leave, the Holy Ghost would baptize your tongue all over again. It's not doubt. It's faith. It's not unbelief. It's revival. It's not negativity. It's trusting God. It's miracles. With your tongue, with your words, you can bless or curse. With your words, you have the power to build up or to tear down. With your words, you can strengthen or you can weaken. You have the power to bring joy or sorrow. You can speak life or you can speak death. And since we're preaching tonight about the promises of God, I'm going to preach to you that with your words, with your tongue, you have the power to either allow the promises of God to come to pass in your life or you have the power with your words, with your tongue to revoke the promises of God out of your life. Here's what I'm preaching. You can talk yourself into revival and you can talk yourself out of revival. You can talk yourself into the blessings of God and you can talk yourself out of the blessings of God. You can talk yourself into the glory of God and you can talk yourself out of the glory of God. You can talk yourself into your miracle and you can talk yourself out of your miracle. 
whether the promises of God come to pass in my life or not. It's not God's fault. It's not God's fault. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. It's not God's fault. Everything that God has promised has been stamped with the yes of Jesus. It's not God's fault. It's not God's word. That's not the fault. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled in the heavens and heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. The grass will wither and the flower will fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. You know what I'm preaching? If God said it, that's all that matters. If God said it, that's all that matters. If God, I don't care what the doubter says. If God said it, that's all that matters. I don't care what the unbeliever says. If God said it, come on, Rialto. Come on, Inland Lighthouse. If God promised revival, I don't care what the naysayer says. If God said it, that's all that matters. If God said uh, this building will be paid off, uh, that's all that matters. Uh, If God said, uh, I'll fill it with my glory, uh, and I'll fill it with my presence, uh, and I'll fill it with souls, uh, that's all that matters. I don't care what the devil says. a message to hell tonight Uh, if you're in this building tonight uh, and all you want to focus on uh, and it's just doubting and unbelieving and and, and finding fault and criticizing come on uh, you're going to have to find somebody else uh, because you're in a church tonight uh, that believes uh, what I'm preaching Uh, if God said it uh, I rebuke doubt in Jesus' name. I rebuke unbelief in Jesus' name. I rebuke a spirit of negativity and criticism in Jesus' name. If God said it, that's all that matters. I'm preaching to some saints of God tonight. I'm preaching to some good people tonight. There's been a little spirit of unbelief that's crawled on your shoulder. You need to knock him off tonight and say, devil, you're a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. Devil, you're a liar. You're the father of lies. My unsaved husband, he's coming home. My unsaved wife, she's coming home. My unsaved kids, they're coming home. I will receive my miracle. It's not just enough for God to say it. It's not just enough for God to say it. Say it. 
but hell needs to hear me say it. And not only does hell need to hear me say it, uh, sometimes, uh, Michael Barrier, you need to hear yourself uh, say it. Uh, I say yes uh, to the promises of God. Uh, I say yes uh, to miracles. Uh, I say yes. Uh, I say amen. Uh, I say yes. Say yes to revival. Can I just tell you what I feel tonight? Rialto, you're on the verge of a great harvest. I'm telling you what I feel tonight. You're on the verge of a great revival. A great, I know this church has had great revival. I've seen it. I've seen it with my eyes. But I'm telling you, you haven't seen anything yet. You're on the verge of a great endeavoring. You're on the verge of miracles. You're on the verge of healing. You're on the verge of deliverance. Somebody on this Sunday night uh, needs to add their stamp uh, to the promise. (laughs) Because it's God's yes and my yes coming together (sighs) come on somebody right now you need to add your yes to what I'm preaching (sighs) come on you need to add your yes right now There's a witness of the Holy Ghost in this room right now. You need to open your heart and receive the word of the Lord right now. Come on, you need to add your yes to it. You need to add your yes to it. Not just as a collective body, but individuals. God has made some promises to you. You need to add your yes to it right now. Come on, you need to say yes. You don't believe your words are powerful? Just ask 10 men who taught. They taught an entire generation out of the blessings of God. They came back and said, we went to the land that you sent us. You may be seated. We went to the land that you sent us. And surely, it's a land that floweth with milk and honey. Here's the grapes. One cluster of grapes so large, it took two men to carry it on a staff. Here's the pomegranates. Here's the figs. And the people, they were ecstatic. We're talking about hundreds of years. I promise, they're on the verge. They are on the brink They're standing on the banks of the Jordan. They can see it. And then they said, nevertheless, and Joshua and Caleb, up to this point, they're with them. They're amening everything they have to say. And then those 10 say, nevertheless. And Joshua and Caleb, they kind of back off a little bit. And those 10 start to say, The cities we saw, they were great. The walls, you haven't seen walls like we saw walls. And Joshua and Caleb, knowing the power of their words and watching it on the faces of Israel, they interrupt them because they know where this is headed. And they say, no, 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 no. Let us go up at once for we are well able to overcome. 
And those ten say, oh, no, we're not. You should have seen the inhabitants of the land. We were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. They're giants. They're huge. And God said, enough's enough. They can't go in. They can't see it. And they talked an entire generation out of living in houses that they didn't have to build. And they talked, and they talked, are you hearing me? They talked an entire generation out of drinking out of wells that they didn't have to dig. They talked an entire generation out of eating off of vineyards and olive trees that they didn't have to plant. They talked them out of it with their words. But God said, Joshua and Caleb, they can go in. They can see it because somewhere they added their amen to the promise. Somewhere when God made the promise, I'll go with you. It's your land. Joshua and Caleb, they stamped that promise with their yes. They said amen. And God said they can see it. I refuse to be like that Lord on whose hand the king leaned when famine came. And the man of, it was so bad. It was donkey's head for 80 pieces of silver. It was dove's tongue for five pieces of silver. I think the math is somewhere around seven, eight hundred dollars for a donkey's head in today's currency. 40 something dollars for dove's tongue. And Elisha stumbled to the gate of the city. And he said, tomorrow about this time, you won't be buying donkey's head. You won't be eating dove's dung. But you'll be buying barley and flour. You'll be buying it right here in the gate of the city. And you won't be paying 80 pieces of silver. And you won't be paying five pieces of silver. You won't be paying seven, eight hundred dollars or forty dollars. Uh, you'll buy it uh, right here in the gate of the city uh, for eight and nine dollars. Uh, and that Lord on whose hand the king leaned, uh, he said, If the Lord uh, would make windows in heaven, uh, might this thing be? Uh, and Elisha turned uh, and said, Sir, uh, you will see it uh, with your eyes. Uh, but let me tell you, you just talked yourself out uh, of the miracle. Uh, you just talked yourself out uh, of the blessings of God. You just talked yourself out of it. And you know what happened? You know the rest of the story. The next day as the word of the Lord was it was sold in the gate of the city. The famine was over. Revival came to Samaria like the word of God said. And that Lord on whose hand the king leaned, he saw it but he was trampled in the gate because he refused to say yes to the promise of God so here's what I'm preaching tonight I want to be like Abraham who against hope believed in hope and he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief he didn't stagger when God made that promise when he was 75 years old your Bible says he didn't look at his body that was dead he didn't consider Sarah's womb that was dead he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief but he was strong in faith giving glory to God knowing that what God had promised God was able to perform I'm preaching to you on this Sunday night if God said it that's all that matters I think we ought to lift our hands right now come on lift your hands lift your voice 
Rialto. Come on, Inland Lighthouse. Your greatest days are not behind you. They're in front of you. Your greatest revival is not behind you. It's in front of you. Your greatest miracles aren't behind you. They're in front of you. Everybody stand. I'm done. Let me tell you what God's looking for tonight. He's looking for a Mary. He's looking for a Mary. You ready? When that angel visited her and said, behold, you'll conceive. You're going to bring forth a son. Call his name Jesus. Mary said, How can these things be? Sing, I know not a man. I'm just a little virgin girl. I'm engaged, but I'm not married. I want to know how this is going to happen. I really like this. You know what the next three words are? The Holy Ghost. Mary, I'm not asking you to figure out how. The Holy Ghost is the how. That was a word for somebody right there. You're trying to figure out how. And the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you, the Holy Ghost is the how. You don't know how it's going to happen. You don't have to know how it's going to happen. The Holy Ghost is how it's going to happen. Pastor, I don't know how this building's going to be paid off. The Holy Ghost is the how. I don't know how we're going to build that. The Holy Ghost is the how. He said the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. The power of the Almighty is going to overshadow you. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And you know what Mary's response was? According to your word, so be it unto me. According to your word, so be it unto me unto me I'm preaching to you tonight sir I'm preaching to you tonight ma'am Inland Lighthouse I'm preaching to you tonight it's not your job to figure out the how it's not your job to figure out the when it's not your job to figure out the where that's his job let him figure it out your job is to add your amen to the promise your job job is to stamp the promise of God with your amen. Your job is to say yes to the promise. Your job is to say yes to my unsaved husband coming home. It's not your job to figure out how. Your job is to say yes to your unsaved wife coming home. Your job is to say yes to the backslider coming home. Your job is to say yes to revival. The greatest revival we've ever seen. That's your job. Does anybody want to say yes? Come on, as they begin to sing and play, you ought to throw your hands in the air and say yes.